Good evening. Welcome to another evening of Explore the Tanya. Awaken your soul and take control. Tonight's class is being dedicated by Dr. Eric and Lori Miller in honor of the yard site of Lori's mom, Chaika Bas Rachmiel Cohen. The Nishama should have an aliyah. Thank you very much. And uh, she should look down and have lots and lots of nachas from your entire family, which I'm sure she's having. Okay, folks. We've been speaking about three types of people. We've been speaking about the tzaddik, the rasha, and the benani. We've been speaking about the righteous man, the wicked man, and the benani. We're not sure yet what a tzaddik, the exact definition of a tzaddik, a rasha, and a benani is yet. We're not sure of that. But we know one thing. We have an example. Someone said, I am an example of a benoni. A benoni is the in-between. Tzaddik being one extreme, Russia being the other extreme, and the benoni being right in the middle. And who was this example? The example was Rabbah, the great sage Rabbah. Our great sage. So that doesn't make sense, says the Alter Rebbe, the Balatanya, the author of the Tanya. It doesn't. It just doesn't make sense. And the reason it doesn't make sense is, wait a minute. He was one of the greatest rabbis, one of the greatest rabbis of his generation, one of the greatest sages. He's not considering himself a tzaddik, even if he wants to show a bit of humility. He, you can show a bit of humility, but not completely opposite from what you are, because that's completely false. So how does he call himself this Benoni, the in-betweener? And not only that, we know that Rabbah never stopped learning Torah and doing mitzvahs. He constantly through the day was either davening, learning Torah, or doing mitzvahs. So come on, how is it that he can call himself a Benini, the in-betweener? And we don't know the exact definition of what this Benoni is. We're trying to figure out, and we go now through different options. So one option is as follows. Wait a minute. Is there ever a, a chance and a time that a person can become this Benoni, this in-between guy? It's almost impossible. Why? Says the Alter Rebbe, the Balatanya. When a person sins, he's called wicked. Period. He's a wicked person. Afterwards, if he does tshuva and he repents, he's called a tzaddik. So you're either, according to this, you're either a rasha or a tzaddik. So when can a person turn out to be this benoni, this guy in between, this in-betweener? It doesn't make sense. So now we go through a few other options. Bafilu, and even if you're going to say as follows. You know what a Benoni is? Maybe a Benoni is someone. Maybe it's someone, you know what? He did not transgress something, uh, a, a law, a halacha that was biblical. It was rabbinical. But it tells us, in the Gemara, the Talmud tells us, even someone who transgresses something rabbinically, a rabbinical enactment, he is also still called a Russia wicked. He is still called a Russia. And then it says another possible approach is as follows. Maybe it's someone 
we have a law as follows, that if I and I see someone doing something bad, sinning, and I have the ability to stop him, maybe even to tell him off a little bit in a nice way that I could stop him, I have to stop him. What happens if I don't? According to this, another Gemara, another thing in the Talmud, Nikra Rasha, he is also, such a person is also called a wicked person. He goes in that category, even if he didn't transgress a sin on his own, he didn't transgress something, he didn't do something bad, but he didn't stop someone from doing something bad, he's also called in the category, he's considered the category of a Rasha. The Chal Shekain. And how much more so? If he is able, if he is able to do to do something, a mitzvah, a positive commandment, which is biblical, and let's say he neglects it, he didn't do it. He's for sure. He, he's no Benoni, he's no in-between guy. He falls into the category of an evil person. Kemai, just like Sheiv Efshar, Kol Sheefshar Lelasek Batayrev Einasek. Anyone who has the ability and has a chance to sit and learn Torah, and he doesn't. He is called a Rasha. Shalav Darshu Rabbi Seinu Zechrena Levracha, and this is a very harsh saying on someone who can learn, and he doesn't. He neglects the learning. He doesn't go to learn. Kidvara Shembaza. He, he cuts the cuts, which means he just he expressed a shame and an embarrassment for the word of God, and his soul shall be cut off. And this is another saying in the Talmud. So this such a person is also called a rasha. So we still don't know what is this benoni. Upshita demikre rasha tvei meiver isur dirabanan. And for sure, you're called a Russia worse in such a case than desecrating a rabbinical law. So, my friends, what is this Benoni? I understand what a tzaddik is. I understand what a Russia is. I understand both extremes. What is this in between guy? In between or between a tzaddik and a Russia? The M Cain, and if all these options, process of elimination, a Benoni ain't bo a filo avon bitul Torah. He doesn't even have that sin of neglecting Torah study. He doesn't even have that. So what is this Benoni that we're talking about? He's not called a tzaddik. It seems like he's a tzaddik. He's definitely not called a Rasha. So what exactly is this Benoni? Now, right now, if we look, put in front of you, according to what we just learned, a Tzaddik, a righteous person, and a Benoni, and this in-between person, my friends, there is no difference. We cannot see a difference. So why is one called the Tzaddik, and one is called the Benoni, and therefore we're going to soon see that the author of the Tanya, the Balatanya, is going to say, you know where the difference is between a Tzaddik and a Benoni? It's not external. Externally, they both look the same. They're both Tzaddikim. They're both great. They're both righteous. They're both good. There's got to be some difference internally between the tzaddik, the righteous, and the benoni. And therefore, omishom hachi, and because of this difference, that it's not external, that even a benoni does not have any transgressions, Ta'araba, our great sage Rabba, was able to say, shahu benoni, that he is a benoni. So right now, we know there is an internal difference, but we don't know yet what is that internal difference. Externally, the tzaddik 
and the Benoni are the same. Remember one thing. At Sadiq is not the classic Sadiq that we all imagine. The Benoni for sure is not what we imagine. And if the Sadiq and the Benoni are not what we imagine, guess what? Then we're not, we have to see the new definition of what a Russia is. What we might call, or who we might call a Russia, wicked, according to the author of the Tanya, the Balatanya Reb Shner Zaman of Liadi, might not be that wicked. If a tzaddik is not what we think a tzaddik is. A benini, we don't know yet. But there's not a big difference between the benini and the tzaddik. So then the Russia can't exactly be what we call a Russia either. For ho the Amrinon and this the Amrinon by Alma and this that the common folk say they use the expression the Mechsa al Mechsa Mikre Benini Vereb Schuyes Mikre Tzadik that most people say you know what the interpretation of a Tzadik is most people will tell you someone who has mostly the majority of Good deeds, the majority of mitzvahs, the majority of merits, that is a tzaddik. Most people will say that. And you know what a benoni is? He's not a rasha, he's not a tzaddik, he's half and half right in the middle, that's a benoni. So this that most of the world calls a tzaddik or a benoni, shame hamusha le'inyan schar va'inish. This is not the exact meaning this is not the exact meaning. This is figurative. This is a figure of expression. This is, he's like a tzaddik, which means as follows. When it comes before Rosh Hashanah, and we come before the heavenly court, if we are judged by our actions, each action individually, most people are coming out without a great verdict, to say the least. So how are we judged? Very simple. God looks at us at our, not our actions, but the majority of our actions. If we have a majority of mitzvot, good deeds, wait a minute, we just came out innocent and we call that a tzaddik. If we have a majority of averos, sins, wait a minute, so that's called a rasha. We, ha we are guilty. But is that a real tzaddik? No. Is that a real rasha? No. Imagine if someone walks away from the court case from the heavenly court case, and he walks away with 51% majority. Majority is 51% good deeds. Is he really, is that the real definition of a tzaddik? Because he still has 49% sins. <laughs> but why do we call him a tzaddik? Because he came out righteous in the, in the verdict. And the same thing, just the opposite, a Russia. When are you called a Russia in the heavenly court? When you have 51% of Eros, sins. Is that a real Russia? You still have 49% mitzvot, good deeds. So this Sadik and Russia are just expressions that we're using to define innocent and guilty. But the bottom line, what is the true meaning of a tzaddik? That's not. Just a majority is not a tzaddik. The majority of sins is not called a rasha. A rasha is complete. Let's go a little further. Because you are judged according to your the majority of deeds, the only reason you are called a tzaddik is because 
You came out innocent. You won this court case. And that's why you are righteous. So right now, my friends, we're really, really not sure what this Sadiq and Russia means. But, says the Balatanya, the author of the Tanya, we don't know, we don't know what this great level is of a tzaddik and a benoni. And there's not too big of a difference right now because of our process of elimination between both of those titles. Amr Rabbi Seinu Zechrena Levrecha Tzadikim Yetzer Tov At Tzadik His good inclination His Yetzer Tov Shelf and drives him Rules him And now we see something very interesting It's a teaching also from the Talmud And maybe we will get a little better Definition and understanding between a tzaddik and a benoni. Shenemar David Amela, King David said, Velibi cholal bekirbi, my heart is empty within me. What does that mean? Says the Gemara, says the Talmud, She'en la yetzahara. He killed his Yetzahara. He has no evil inclination at all. Can you imagine? Now that's a tzaddik. Someone who actually only does good and has no evil inclination. How is that possible that David Amelok King David had no evil inclination? Ah, uh, it says as follows. He hard go by tainus. He killed his evil inclination with all the times that he fasted. It's brought down in many, many of our holy books, mysticism and the Talmud, and so on. That you can fight and annihilate, wipe out your evil inclination by fasting. Some people even say you can do the same by. Learning Torah a whole day. Imagine. But over here it says he fasted. So now we see what a real tzaddik is. He has no evil inclination. Aval but call me shalohi madrega zo. Everyone else who has not reached that level of wiping out, annihilating your evil inclination. Even though his merits are the majority, it outweighs his transgressions. He's not at all on the level of a tzaddik. He's not at all on that level. Lochain, therefore, Amru Rabbi Seinu Zechreinem Levracha, a rabbi said by Midrash in the Midrash, Ra'a HaKadosh Baruch God saw, B'Tzadikim Shemuatim, he saw this, these type of tzadikim that we're talking about right now, there are going to be very little, very few, so what he did was, he spread them out in every single generation of Kamesha Kosom, like it says, that the Tzaddik is the foundation of the world. Now, my friends, if a Tzaddik is merely one whose merits outweigh his transgression, if that's a real Tzaddik, there would be a lot more Tzaddikim out there. But the tzaddik that the founder and author of the Tanya, Rabbi Shirzaman of Liadi, is speaking about, has no transgressions. He wiped out his evil inclination, his Yetzahara. And therefore, that tzaddik has reached, no one else can reach, even a Benani.
right now, according to what we've learned the past few classes, the Benoni also has no transgressions. We had a process of elimination. It can't be only rabbinical. They desecrate only the laws that are rabbinical. That can be. It can't be someone who neglected learning. To, that can be. That's a Russia. Everything is either tzaddik or a Russia. And on top of everything, if you sin, you're a Russia. If you do tshuva, you repent on that. You're a tzaddik. So when are you a Benoni? And it gave all eliminations what a Benoni is not. We still don't know what a Benoni is. But we know what a Benoni is not. So now we're up to as follows. The tzaddik and the benoni, really from the outside, externally they look the same. They're great, they're righteous, they're fantastic. But internally, the, there's a big difference. One still has an evil inclination, but does not listen to it. But he still has that urge and he still has those desires. One doesn't even have that anymore. One doesn't even have that. Amazing. So now the question is, oh, the famous question is, this book called the Tanya that we're learning is also called Sefer Shel Benanim, the book of in-betweeners, which means as we learned at the beginning, this Benoni is relevant to every single Jew, this level of a Benoni. Meaning, we have to strive and we have the tools to become that Benoni. But Rabbi, how can we do that? That Benoni is so great. So as we're going to go on in the book of Tanya, we are going to see a fascinating thing. And we have mentioned this in the last class. That when we look at a person, what he is and what he does in many cases could be two completely different things things. Two completely different things. I remember growing up, which I'm sure you all remember growing up, but I remember incidents when I was growing up that, you know, I'd be a little mischievous in yeshiva. And they know the biggest punishment to give me was not to right away throw me out. But call my father. My father would come to Montreal where I went to high school. My father came to Montreal and almost every time he would look at me and say, Yankel, he'd say to me, this is not you. How, how can you even do something like that? This is not you. Now, I don't know if your parents ever said that to you. This is not you. What does that mean, this is not me? This is what I just did. What do you mean it's not me? Because not every time when a person does something bad, not every time when a person has an urge to do something mischievous, something bad on his level, is he really bad? He might do something not so good, but he might be a good person. So what goes on inside a person? What makes him tick? What makes a person's soul tick day in and day out to do good, to make trouble? We all, I don't believe we have any, uh, let's for argument's sake say any tzaddikim, complete tzaddikim here on the, in the class. We've all done something wrong once upon a time. Does that mean that is us? That do we become bad? Does that mean that is what our essence is? So my dear friends, as we go on, in our next class, 
we're going to learn a little bit about the soul. The soul of a Jew. What exactly makes us tick? What exactly makes us be mischievous? And what exactly does every single person, what is his potential? Believe it or not, as I said last week, and I'll say it again, and it's so important. And this is the main focus of the Tanya. Judaism is relevant to every single person. Judaism is not only relevant to the Hasidic Jews, to the Orthodox Jews, to the conservative Jews, to the Reformed Jews. Judaism is even relevant to a Jew who still today he might not know he's a Jew. So you might ask me, Rabbi, how's that possible? So I can tell you, I have a very close friend in Tzfas, I've told you this before, that he deals with many Russians who came and he investigated way back in their family trees and found out that they were really Jewish. And many of these Jews, by the way, who thought all their years they were not Jewish, Many of them, when they found out they really were Jewish, guess what they said? We want to live the rest of our life as a Jew, and we want to die as a Jew. Therefore, at 80, 89, 92, and I mention these ages because I know people, each one of these ages, they got their bris mila circumcision at that age. They got it at that age. Why? Because Every Jew has inside of him, as I've said in the past, a pintalayid, a spark of God, a spark of the one above. And therefore, to be a benoni, to be a benoni, as the Al Terebe, the Balatani, is going to teach us in the future, is relevant to every single one of us. And that, my friends, is really an awakening piece of news. Because if we can know our real potentials, if we can awaken ourselves, we can awaken our souls, we can take control of ourselves, to reach much higher potentials, cause as the Al Tareb is going to show us, the Balatanya will teach us that each one of us have that, those tools and that potential to reach greater heights than we've ever dreamt. Ah, oh, you're going to say to me, Rabbi, I've done so much already, how much can I do? And I'm going to tell you, you haven't done enough. I haven't done enough. No, none of us have done enough. We don't understand the hidden powers, divine powers, potential that every one of us have from women, children, adults, men, senior citizens, the youth. We all have that. And our job in life is to conquer the world. And how do we conquer the world? By spreading godliness and reaching our potentials, our hidden talents. And I wish you all a great night and all the best. Have a good night. And as they say, may the good news be yours. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you so much for joining.